Today I'm going to show you how to add a sunset style to your image in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is really cool. We're adding style to an image and specifically a sunset style. And this is, it's gonna work out perfectly. Anytime you've got like a sports image or like a portrait image, let's see like an engagement session or something like that, or a lifestyle image when the sun is nice and low in the sky and you're shooting into the sun. Adding this little bit of style is gonna totally change the look and feel of your image and give it a little bit more of that like romantic feel. We're gonna teach you guys some great things you can do with levels. I'm gonna show you how to use the gradient tool and in the end, we're gonna show you guys how to use a radial blur to add some motion to this image. Our image for today is from photolia.com. It's an awesome stock website and I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that you can look for in your images to see like, is this style even going to work for your images? All right, the first thing we're gonna look at is the placement of the sun or your light source in the image. And you can see the placement of the sun here is it's right about there. We can see it's a nice bright area and we've got a shadow behind our subject right there. So if this is, let's just do a little diagram here. If this is your camera, okay, and then this is your subject. Hi, I'm the subject. You want to make sure your sun is behind your subject. This is going to be the perfect place to actually create one of these photos. Now if the sun were behind your camera, this would be called a front lit image because the, the light would be lighting the front of your subject in terms of your camera. If the light is behind your subject, right over here, which it is in this case, this is a backlit image, okay? The light can be to the left or the right of the subject as well. So you wanna make sure this is gonna be either a backlit photo or to the right or to the left of the photo. If it's a front lit photo, it's not going to work as well. So keep that in mind. And you also wanna see, you want, ideally the sun to be a little bit lower in the sky. If the sun is like, you know, way up there at 12 o'clock noon, it's not gonna work as well because the sun tends to get a little bit warmer as it goes down to the horizon. And that's the effect we're creating is this nice warm glowing effect. So if the sun is right in the middle of the sky, it's not gonna be as believable. So keep those things in mind. Be sure that all those elements are present, the backlight, the side light, or the other side light <laughs> and the position of the sun in the sky. And those things are gonna make sure that this effect's actually gonna work in your images. After we define what the lighting needs to be to make our effect actually work, let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm gonna use a bunch of different levels adjustment layers. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer and come down here to our levels. And basically showing you how this works really quick, if I grab this dark point here and kind of bring this from the left to the right, it's going to make my darks a little bit darker. If I grab this point and drag it from the right to the left, it's gonna make my lights a little bit lighter. Okay, down here is gonna make my darks lighter and over here is gonna make my lights darker. So a lot of really cool things you can do with a levels adjustment layer. What we're gonna do to add this little bit of style, I actually want some of the detail in my image to go away. And it's, again, just for this style. This isn't every single image. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my darks and I'm gonna make them quite a bit darker. There we go, something like that looks good. Now, if you're not sure exactly how dark you should go, don't worry about it because you can always go back into these levels adjustment layers and change them at a later date. Okay, so we're gonna make that nice and dark. There we go, so that's a decent start to our image. Again, remember, we're trying to make this look like a sunset. So bring that a little bit darker. The next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab another levels adjustment layer. So we're gonna kind of stack these on top of one another. So before we were, in our RGB color mode, which is basically just gonna affect the lights and the darks. I can also affect each of the individual color ranges. So I'm gonna go over here to RGB and we're gonna go to our red channel now. So here in our red channel, I'm gonna click and drag this guy and it's gonna add more cyans into our shadows. But if I drag this guy over here, it's gonna add some of those like reds into our shadows. It's gonna lighten the shadows up a little bit and add some reds. So you can see this is already starting to get that effect. This is the big part of it right over here. Okay, so we're gonna bring that up right about there. And if you wanna go try playing around with your green channel, add maybe a little bit of, there we go. Add a little bit of green, it's gonna give it a little bit more of that sepia tone. There we go, that looks pretty good as well. If you were gonna go in your blue channel, this would put some blue in your shadows as well. So a lot of really cool color effects you can do here in levels. We're just gonna keep it something like this for now. All right, so we can already see, and without this first level adjustment layer making everything darker, 
this is what it would look like. So it would still warm your image up, but you wouldn't get as much of that like sunset feel. OK, cool. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to make another levels adjustment layer. And some of these you could combine, but I'm just doing them all together at the same time. It makes it a little bit easier. All right, this levels adjustment layer, we're going to work on the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to go again to my blue channel this time. And we're going to click and drag this from the right to the left. And this is going to add some like nice yellows into our highlights. You can see if I really crank it over, that's what we're going to get. All right, there we go. And that looks pretty good. OK, so we're really getting that sunset feel to our image now. Now the next thing we're going to do, I want to add kind of like a center to this. We want to say like this is the sun. And I want it to be nice, a little bit brighter than the rest of the image, and a little bit more saturated as well. So again, we're going to grab another levels adjustment layer. I'm going to click here on my white point. Or again, remember, that's how we make things a little bit brighter, right? Just grab our white point and bring it up a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my red channel. And we're going to crank this over to the right, because I want to add some saturation to it as well. OK, so we've got that. But we can see, like, obviously, we don't want this to be visible everywhere, right? We said we wanted to create like a center of this effect. And that's where our gradient tool comes into play. So to get to your gradient tool, just hit G or click on your gradient tool right here. And then we're going to choose our foreground to transparent gradient. So gradient, and then you can click up here on the gradient editor. And you can choose like a foreground to background, foreground to transparent, or any of these other cool things. So I usually click on foreground to transparent, because that allows me to choose my foreground color. And then it just goes from that to transparent, which is like it's blank, basically. So that looks pretty good. And now I'd be painting with white to transparent. And my layer mask, you can see, is already white. So if I click and drag out, it doesn't do anything, right? Because it's just making more white. So let's go ahead and make our layer mask black. I'm going to hit Command I, and that's going to make our layer mask black. And now, if I just go from left to the right here, we can see what this looks like. It's just going from foreground color, which is white, to transparent. OK? I can go over the entire image if I wanted to do that as well. And we're also get to choose what type of gradient we'd like to use. This is a linear gradient, which basically means, let me hold Alt or Option. And we're going to click on our layer mask, and that's what the actual layer mask looks like. So it's just making this layer visible wherever the gradient is. You can also choose, let's just undo that, to have a radial gradient, which is this, this guy right here. And it's going to, I'll just do a small area like that. It just creates a round circle instead of a, instead of a line. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the, one of those right about there. There we go. You can go a little bit bigger if you, were, if you want to do that. All right. There we go. That looks pretty good. So again, this effect is visible on the entire layer until we add a black layer mask. And then we're just making it visible right there. So the next thing I want to do is kind of take this effect that I made here with this red layer and make this visible here in the center, but not so much visible towards the edges. So I'm going to click on my layer mask for this one. Now I'm going to click on my linear gradient over here. And we're still on foreground and transparent. I'm just choosing black as my foreground color. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And then I can kind of choose to come in from the sides a little bit, maybe from the bottom and from the right-hand side. And this just adds a little bit of a gradient around the edges. So this red is, is tend to be centered here in the middle of the image and not so much affecting out the rest of the image. All right, and all these guys are still up for change. So if I wanted to go back in here to my levels adjustment layer and I wanted to make my darks even darker, I could totally do that. But because we've got this layer adding red into the darks, even if I make those darks really dark, you still see some color in the darks, which I think is really, really cool. All right, so let's bring it right about there. Very cool. Now, here on the end, it's totally up to you. If you like how like kind of saturated and stylized this is, leave it just like that. If you don't, just grab a hue saturation adjustment layer and take your saturation down just a little bit, or down to zero, but then you kind of lose the entire effect. Or you can bring your saturation up. Whatever you do, it's totally up to you. All right, I kind of liked it. Brought it up. Brought some color in there. Cool. All right, so I really like that. I'm going to hit Shift and click on all those layers and hit Command G. So we can kind of see all of our coloring right now. Let's just turn this off and then back on. So you can see any image that's kind of like taken into a backlight like this, you can use this coloring to get that really nice, cool, stylized effect. All right, you know what? The sky is a little bit too dark, right? So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to lower the opacity of that a little bit. That's why I love adjustment layers, because you can affect these even after you make them. All right. Now, here, just kind of like a little bonus at the end, I'm going to show you guys how to add a really cool blur that's going to make it look, look, look like she's running into the image. So to create our blur, the first thing I'm going to do is make a new layer. Then we're going to make a stamp visible layer, which is Shift, Option, Command, E. 
That's basically a copy of everything you see. So with that layer, we're gonna go to a filter here to blur, and I'm gonna go to radial blur. Okay, so here in our radial blur, let's choose an amount like eight. We don't need a huge blur on here. And I'm gonna choose this to be a zoom blur. So it's gonna look like we're zooming into our image. And you have to choose your blur center. This is basically where everything's going to converge to. So we're just gonna try the very center. Now you don't get a preview with this dialog, so you just kinda of have to choose somewhere and then hit okay and see what it does and then move a little bit. So you can see it did a nice blur, but it's kinda, of, it's blurring from right about here, right? And we need to move this down and to the right. So let's just hit undo here real quick. We'll go to filter, blur, down here to radial blur again, down a little bit and to the right. Hit OK, and hopefully it's coming from right about there. All right, that looks pretty good. So it applied that radial blur to the entire image, but I really don't want it visible in the center. I just want it to be visible on the outsides of the image. So I'm gonna put a layer mask on this. We're gonna, again, use our gradient tool, and I'm gonna go right over here to our radial gradient, and then we're gonna choose our foreground to transparent, and I'm gonna choose black as my foreground color. So I'm gonna click and drag from the center right on out, and that's basically just not gonna make this layer visible, or it's gonna make this layer invisible right here in the middle. So you can see here in the edges, check that out, it applies that really cool blur, just kinda like giving the image a little bit more motion, but in the center, where our subject is, it's still nice and in focus. And if you need to just grab your brush tool, and paint it black just where your subject is, um, that's a good idea. So she's in focus, because that's what we're gonna do. All right, really, really cool, guys. So a super simple effect, you can use coloring as well as a blur to make these images look like they're, they're really dynamic and have that nice look that she's just running right in the sun. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can keep up to date and receive free videos on Photoshop and photography every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode, please leave a comment down below because that's how we get our amazing ideas for this episode from you. And sh share it, for share it. <laughs> share Flurn with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. That would help out a lot. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Oh, get away from here, fly. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's there's flies in today's episode. There are two flies in here? Oh, guys, there are two flies. I'm the lord of the flies. They're everywhere. They love my hair product. I don't blame them. It's Moroccan oil.